Welcome to the 11th uh, Rubismo Cafe Talk, uh, the third uh, cycle dealing with uh, sustainable issues. So my name is Justin Casimir. I'm the project coordinator for Rubismo uh, project. Rubismo is rural business models, uh, business models, innovative business models for rural areas, looking at the food value chain, bio-based value chains, and also the ecosystem services. So project started more or less three, three years ago. We are in the last, uh, the last month of the project. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the third cycle. If we can go to the next uh, picture. Yes. yes. Uh, and today, Julie Leroux from Greenflex will talk about this disruptive business models and how to integrate them in your, in your project or in your company. Uh, we've had two other um, really interesting uh, presentations from Camille Putra and Apolline Abosi, from, also from Greenflex. And they will be uh, available quite, quite soon on our YouTube channel. So um, have a look at the YouTube channel. There's already uh, some of the, of the talks from, from before. Uh, and also, just to remind you, next week we will... Uh, be going to, to Italy and visit the Caviro wine uh, production. And they will talk, uh, talk a bit more about their circular, yeah, how they integrated circular economy to their, to their business. So that will be really interesting. And uh, you won't have to book any, uh, any flights. You won't have to do any CR test. Uh, you just have to sit at home and uh, follow us on this online uh, study visit. But I think it's time for, for Julie to, uh, yeah, to introduce herself and uh, tell us a bit more about disruptive business models. Yes, thank you, Justin. So, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Julie Leroux. I'm working at uh, Greenflex, such as uh, Apolline and, uh, and Camille. And today, I'm just going to present you uh, about the main disruptive business model. Uh, first, uh, we'll have a quick introduction about the classic economy model and its limits. Then I will uh, be able to uh, present you a little bit more about the main disruptive business model. And to conclude, we will have just a, a quick um, in, in, um, talk about a new conception of economy uh, inspired by the sustainability of our ecosystem. Um, the presentation, uh, for the presentation, we only have 15 minutes, so I will not be able to go deeper into the presentation of each disruptive business model. But um, if you have questions, uh, don't uh, hesitate to ask them uh, at the end. So, uh, today our economy is based on a linear, linear model, which can be resumed to mine, manufacture and flow. First, we are extracting some raw materials, such as oils, minerals, and uh, other kind of water and energy to produce some goods and uh, equipment that are useful for our daily life. Uh, the manufacturing of this product consumes also a lot of energy and water, and to distribute the goods to consumers, we are also consuming more energy. So, and at the end of the life of the product, there are several ways of treatments, but most of the time products go to landfills or energy recovery. So basically to sum up, we are extracting raw materials that are most of the time limited resources to produce some goods and equipment that are going to be thrown away in the landfill most of the time. So this is a linear economic models uh, that are based on an unlimited and low cost availability of resources, which we all know is entirely false because we only have one planet and its resources are limited. So this linear economic models leads to ma major environmental issues. First of all, we have nat uh, natural resource depletions. All the minerals and oils we are digging up leads to the depletion of fossil resources, but also uh, minerals. Um, all the goods and equipment produced have most of the time also short-term use. Uh, we can take, for example, a plain obsolescence, uh, which reduces the life expectancy of our products. Um, for example, your phone or your dishwasher. Um, and in addition, we, uh, we sometimes also um, 
uh, want to buy more and more products because we want to have like the, the last iPhone. Our publicity makers are very good and they succeed to make you think that you need a new coffee maker or iPhone. So this leads uh, to an accumulation of assets and uh, it's increased the volume of waste to be treated. So yes, we, we have like resource depletion uh, an accumulation of waste to be treated. And also we have um, some uh, greenhouse gas emissions, but also pollutions that are produced uh, when we are manufacturing some, uh, some goods. So to address this uh, environmental uh, issues, uh, there are some disruptive business models that are beginning to be developed to, actually, uh, uh, to reach uh, a greater sustainability. Here is a global view of this disruptive business models depending on their place on the product life cycle. As you can see, there are two main uh, disruptive business models. First is bioeconomy, which is basically the use of bio resources, which can be new one or end of life products. And by using this kind of resources, you can first reduce the, the amount of waste produced, but also the extraction of min minerals. Because which are limited because you are using renewable resources instead. And the second business model is circular economy, which is a business model that aims to reduce the use of resources, which can be bio resources and mineral resources in order to preserve our natural resources. And as you can see with the arrow representing the flow of materials on this shim, um, the combination of these business models intend to reduce the extraction of materials, but also the amount of waste produced in order to limit our environmental impact. So the first business model that I'm going to present you is circular economy. There are three kinds of other business model inside this business model, but I will present them later. So circular economy is a business model inspired by nature in which resources have no longer a single life, but an infinite number of successive lives because there is no concept of waste in nature. So here is a vision of the circular economy developed by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Uh, the shim showed that uh, in our economic model, there are two kinds of uh, cycle, the biological cycle represented in green, and composed of bio resources and the technological cycle represented in blue that is mainly composed of uh, products manufactured by humans such as phone, uh, TV, dishwasher or, or computer. And in this cradle to cradle vision, uh, materials are considered as nutrients which at the end of their life can either return to the biological cycle in the in the green cycle or can be recycled and reused by the industry thanks to the technological cycle. Dishem also showed that there is another to respect uh, to improve waste treatment. First, you have to maintain and repair your products, such as your, your dishwasher, for example. Then you have to reuse and refurbish your products. For example, if you are moving from one place to another, instead of throwing away your dishwasher, you can give it or sell it to another person. And then uh, at the end, you have to recycle the, the compound. So you, you to recycle your product, so you take its compound to manufacture other products. Uh, this is the last treatment because you, uh, you consume more energy, water and uh, resources to do so. So for environmental reason, it is way better to first repair then we use and refurbish and at last only recycle products. Here is a very good example of, economy, of circular economy. It's a startup from the Sapiens that choose mushroom to produce uh, materials with various properties by recycling bio waste. For, the, for example, they can produce some edible and medicinal mushroom, but they can also manufacture some biomaterials such as packaging, clothing, uh, insulation, or other kind of furnitures. And with the waste and co-products, they also can produce some fertilizers and other kind of clinic substrates that can clean water and damage soils. 
So this is a very good example of a circular economy and this show for her from waste, you can produce some very uh, good products with high added value. Um, inside circular economy, we also have another business model called industrial and territorial ecology. It's a share of resources between company. For example, the waste produced by a company can be reused by another company to produce some goods. So this model decreases also the amount of waste produced and the extraction of uh, new um, minerals and resources by reinforcing the flow between end-of-life products and manufacturing, as you can see uh, on the chain. There are two main categories of industrial uh, symbiosis. For example, you have alternative synergies, which is uh, basically the exchange of materials, energy, and water between companies. For example, a data center can release heat that can be reused by the public pool close to them to, uh, to eat the pool. Or an industry can produce sometimes some cardboards can, can be reused by another industry to produce paper instead of cutting trees uh, to, uh, to produce the paper. The other kind of uh, symbiosis is the um, mutualization of goods and services. For example, an, um, an industry doesn't necessarily need a truck every day to run its activities. So instead of having one, one tree per company, um, two or three companies can share their truck to run their activity. So it reduces their cost, but also the use of resources. Maybe you heard about Kalenbord. It's one of the most known example of uh, symbiosis. Um, it started like 30 years ago. Uh, it's in Denmark and now it's involved like nine companies, including the municipality. We also have a very good example in France called the Bio Valley. Uh, it's an example of industrial symbiosis in rural territories. And there are like three kinds of uh, synergies that were developed. First, the valorization of waste and co-products between companies. Uh, there are also the sharing of vehicle fleets to develop soft mobility and the optimization of water treatment. Uh, the third business model is a collaborative economy, which is basically the exchange of goods and services between consumers. That's why this business model is placed between the distribution of goods and the consumption. And by sharing, sharing some goods and equipments, you can increase the product utilization. So, and so reduce the use of resources that should have been necessary in order to produce other goods. Um, basically, as I said, it's the sharing of goods between customers, but it can also be the sharing of um, knowledge and services between individuals. Uh, these actions can be done through uh, money transaction uh, or not, if it's a donation. And most of the time, um, you, you use a digital communication platform to do so, so like a, a, an application or a website. And there are four, four types of uh, collaborative ec economy that can be distinguished. Uh, for example, you have the co-use. I think you all know about Blabacar and Airbnb. Uh, and we also have another example for rural territories in France called Agri Echange. Um, it's a web platform to exchange services uh, between farmers uh, linked to farm equipment. So for example, let's say you are a farmer and you have a crop that needs to be tilled, but you don't have the equipment to do so, but I do. So I can go to your farm to till the land and in exchange, you will have to give another services to me or to another farmer. So let's say, for example, you will loan me an equipment to, to grind some co-products. So yes, it's uh, basically it's an exchange between farmers. We also have barter, which is another kind of collaborative economy. And we have also co-development, which is just the sharing of knowledge and services to develop some goods and services. For example, we have AgriFund, which is a network of farmers um, that collects and diffuse data to inform other farmers about pests and disease of crops. So this optimizes uh, agronomic decision making because a farmer can know, know if they have to, uh, to treat their crops or not and when just they, uh, they should treat them. 
the last uh, business model inside circular economy is the economy of functionality. So instead of selling a product, a company sells the use of a product and not the product itself. So it changed the habit of uh, consumption about customers. So as I say, economy of functionality is a sale of a, of a use and not the simple sale of goods. So basically, instead of buying a product, you rent a service. So by favoring rental for sale, the company remains the owner of the goods, which encourage them to, to extend the life expectancy of their products because they, they remain the, the owner of their goods. So this reduces also the consumption of resources because products last longer. Uh, we have two examples. The first one is Taimi. Uh, they propose a rental for, of uh, clothes for the maternity and children. Because when you are pregnant, you, uh, you change uh, quite uh, a lot your, your, your clothes for nine months and you change it quite a few times. And it's the same thing with children when they are growing up. So instead of buying the clothes, you can rent them. And once you are finished with them, they will be give us or sell or rent to another customers uh, instead of being thrown away. The second uh, example is Michelin, which is one of the most known example of uh, economy of functionality. So instead of selling tires, uh, Michelin um, uh, customers pay for the use of the, of the tires, which are the kilometers traveled. Uh, so once the customer have reached a certain amount of kilometers, they, they can change their tire. So Michelin take back the used tire and we replace them with uh, new ones. So the used tire will be recycled by Michelin to build other tires uh, instead of using new resources to manufacture the, the new tire. So um, Michelin, it, uh, it has a very strong positive uh, environmental, but also economic impacts about it. And the last business model is bioeconomy, which is basically the use of bioresources. So as, uh, as I said later, it can be some new bioresources, for example, the wood that you can take from, uh, from forest instead of uh, using some sand to construct building, for example, or it can be end of life products or co-products such as bio-waste. Um, so using bio-resources can limit waste production, but also the extraction of mineral resources, which are limited by using uh, renewable resources uh, instead. Uh, so yes, bioeconomy brings together all activities related to the production, use, and processing of bio-resources. And there, are, there is many area of Application can be the production of food, but also the production of energy uh, can be due to the valorization of bio waste thanks, thanks to methanization. And it can be as a use of uh, chemistry also uh, because you can produce some, um, for example, yes, uh, fertilizers, aromatic, or pharmaceuticals with bio resources. And it can also be used to produce some uh, traditional or innovative materials such as hemp concrete or uh, straw insulation for the building se sectors. Um, here is a famous example of bioeconomy in the rural territory in France. It's the biorefinery of uh, Pomac Bazanco. Um, a cooperative is collecting uh, co products and crops from farmers to feed uh, the biorefinery. Uh, which will transforming these resources into various products. It can be basic products such as food, sugar, and starch, or it can be high added value products such as pharmaceutical, alcohol, and cosmetic assets. So this was the main disruptive business model that I uh, presented you that can be uh, developed to reduce our environmental impacts. And to conclude, I'm just going to mention new other the theoretical economic models that have been developed by economists. Uh, first, we have the social and solidarity economy, uh, which are developed in the 80s. 
uh, that place people and community in the center to address social issues. And there are other uh, theoretical business models that address social and environmental issues. Maybe you, you heard about the regenerative economy, the blue economy, and the symbiotic economy. Uh, this model were built by drawing inspiration about the sustainability of our ecosystems. And if you study their principle, uh, they take into account some of all of the disruptive business models that I uh, presented you later. So if you are interested, I recommend you to read the symbiotic economy because it's a very good example of how you can um, develop a symbiotic relationship between a natural and prosperous ecosystem and an intense and uh, human activity. So thank you for your attention.